Hello, my name is Marvellous Miles Glashier. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer and Co-Founder of Focus Software. That's me right there. Uh, so today I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview of the state of the business intelligence industry as I see it. And full disclosure, Focus is a business intelligence software company. So I'll try my best, however, to be unbiased and impartial to give you an update of where the industry sits and maybe help you uh, make decisions on what BI solution is right for you. So I'm going to look at three reports today. I'm going to look at the, I'm going to mention the Gartner uh, Magic Quadrant. I'm going to talk about the G2 Crowd, which is an online user survey. And I'm also going to talk about uh, the Bark BI Survey 2016, which is the world's biggest survey of business intelligence users. So let's start off with the G2 Crowd. It's a free website, g2crowd.com, if you go to business intelligence. And as I said, this is based 100% on validated views from users of the software. So we like that because it's a really honest thing. It's not based on some analysts. It's based on real people that use the software day in, day out. And it tends to focus on the benefits and how it helps them in their jobs. So what this is nice, if you go down here, they've got a wonderful grid um, which has two axes. One is satisfaction down the bottom from and along the top, the market presence, so how, um, how big are they within the marketplace. I guess the first thing you can see there, it's a really crowded marketplace. There's a lot of vendors, and, and I find the new vendors every day I've never heard of crop up out of nowhere, and I've been doing this for 16 years. Every day there's a new vendor. But if you look at this big sort of messy you know, bunch of logos, you can split it up in different ways, but the way I see the marketplace right now is there's probably three different types of vendors out there. There's the traditional IT-centric enterprise-led type BI tools, so IBM Cognos, uh, SAP Business Objects, Crystal Reports, you know, Tipco, uh, Oracle, um, those sort of big mega vendors, and, and they've been around for a long time, and they still have a fantastic place in the marketplace. They've got huge customer bases that they're doing a very good job for. But as you see, they tend to be on the left side here of customer satisfaction. So then they're in there, they're doing a job, but people aren't as satisfied with them. The second category, and, and this has been a, a really an explosion um, point, which is really the self-service analytics marketplace. And that's got to a point, if we talk about Gartner now for a second, the Gartner BI Magic Quadrant, which from an I, you know, sort of a, an enterprise level um, aspect, the Magic Quadrant, really says there's been a tipping point now. And it's been such a serious tipping point that they've now removed all of the old traditional IT-led business intelligence tools from their Magic Quadrant. And they've only accepted the handful of the, the key uh, self-service analytics products out there. Um, and again, most of those self-service analytic products, they have variations within the, I think, the 24 that are in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Um, but likewise, of all of those ones here, those uh, self-service analytics products, um, they tend to be very much tools. So you know, Microsoft Power BI is a good example of that, as in you buy it and it doesn't do anything for you. You've got to get it, and they have fantastic integration tools that you can use to connect to whatever sorts of data you've got, and then you as a data scientist, most commonly, or maybe a, um, an IT person, but typically someone on the higher technical skill set. I'm not saying a full blow and you're not writing SQL coding, but someone on a, a slightly higher technical skill set is then connecting to the data and building reports, dashboards, visualizations. And they do some amazing stuff. Tableau, obviously, are a world leader in really beautiful visualizations. But all of them really what you're ending up with is, is like Excel. You're ending up with a bunch of Excel spreadsheets. They're very interactive. They're, um, uh, they're very beautiful, many of them, but there's essentially someone creating them and someone consuming that particular visualization or spreadsheet and maybe jumping through, through a few of those. So that's a, the second big area of the market. The third big area, which crosses that last one admittedly, is really where you've got a whole bunch of fantastic niche vendors, and they might be niche by marketplace that they sell to or by their functionality. So, for example, if you look at, uh, where is it, iDashboards, somewhere here, I've lost them, but there's so many vendors, but iDashboards, for example, produces great dashboards. Uh, people like Insight Squared provides uh, analytics and pre-formed reports for sales departments within software companies. Um, uh, 
think Exago produces uh, embeddable software for software companies. Again, so there's all sorts of niche type players in there. Um, ourselves with Focus, um, we provide business intelligence, a business intelligence platform for manufacturing, distribution, and retail customers. Okay, so that's sort of how I see the market. Mega vendors, IT led, generic self-service analytics vendors, and then some really tight niche performance. And what you sort of see across the three reports, in my view, is IT led ones, poor satisfaction, self-service in the middle, we're pretty happy with it, and the niche vendors tend to have the really high satisfaction ratings, which makes sense because they're providing a solution that's probably really almost out of the box for a very specific set of the marketplace, which of course means though, if you're in that market, it's great for you. If they don't meet your needs, then obviously they're not right. So that's the, the pros and cons to that. So that's really what I see uh, looking at the G2 report. You can narrow it down. So if you just click on business intelligence platforms, for example, what you can see is obviously a lot less vendors. And what a business intelligence platform means, and, and they put the, de the details here, um, is um, that they have a, a, a real breadth of functionality um, across multiple areas. So it's not just one thing they have to cover, a whole lot of, of functionality um, uh, that, uh, that, that, that end users require. Okay. So again, once again, you see the high user satisfaction uh, over here for these sorts of these sorts of vendors. Okay. Now within G2 Crowd, I'm not going to do it now. You can select multiple vendors. You just uh, it gives you uh, comparisons between the vendors, or you go in and say, okay, I just want to review uh, the reviews for one particular vendor. So that's looking at sort of a high level summary of the BI industry and what you can get from uh, G2 Crowd. If we move into Bark, so Bark for I, 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 about 15 odd years or 12 years has been doing the Bark BI survey. It's now become the world's largest survey of BI users. And what they do, whereas G2 Crowd are really just giving you all the raw results with a nice little grid um, about your know, individual users review, the Bark goes in and has quite a scientific approach that then allows you to really compare the different BI vendors across a whole bunch of various different metrics. Um, what they've done beautifully this year is they've got a great website that gives you a lot more functionality to see and, and drill into yourself. So, I mean, first of all, um, if we look at the BI tool comparison, we'll scrap down here. So they've got also at a high level, they've got, again, a similar grid type thing. Gartner has their magic quadrant, G2 has the grid, Bark has, I don't know what they call this, the user review matrix, and they break things into peer groups. Okay, so again, it's not wildly different to what I've said here. They've got more groups, large enterprise BI platforms, niche like dashboarding or niche like uh, integrated performance management. And then they sort of break that other area up into different areas like OLAP and they also have a geographical breakdown as well. So if I look, for example, at visual discovery platforms, what you see here, this is the handful of users they consider as visual. And what you see here is the further to the, the right, the higher the business value, which is what I like about Bark, I talk about business value, and the higher to the top, the higher the user experience. And the bigger the circle is the, the more competitive they are. So you see people like Target doing okay, but small, um, small value, focus, I pick it out there, it's got a nice big bright blue circle in the top right. Likewise, if you're in America, you'd look at the America focus vendors, um, and again, you see that similar type thing, some really good plays. And again, people like Dimensional Insight and Focus, two really good niche vendors within big niches, but have really owned that. You see they have that double whammy of business value and high user experience. So from there, though, you can go a lot further. You can go from Bark into individual products and look at some more details of products, or you can go into the BI Analyzer. Now, the BI Analyzer, you need to pay for the rights to, to have that report. So what I'll do is I'll take you briefly through um, what you can get from that and why it's quite interesting. So let's have a look here. So if we now go to, we'll start off with the KPI dashboard. So there's three things you can do. You can go to a KPI dashboard. So for example, you could just look and say, okay, I want to look at um, all products and I want to look at, um, I don't know, um, you know, recommendation, for example. You know. So which of which vendors are most likely to get the highest recommendation? The customers would recommend it. And so there you see a list of the people that highly recommend the, the BI software. So that's looking at individual KPIs. You can go to a product dashboard 
and you can see an individual product, in this case it's showing Arc Plan, and how it performs across a whole bunch of KPIs. You can see they group them into different areas. Okay. Well, probably more relevant, if you're out there and you're looking to say, okay, which business intelligence solution is right for me, and you've got your shortlist or you want to create your shortlist, um, you probably want to see a product comparison. Um, so what you might do is we'll say, let's look at uh, all products. Um, and we'll look at all KPIs. And then what you would then do is would say, okay, let's go in and choose some of these guys here. Okay. So I'll go in and I'll look at some of the ones that, that we tend to see, you know, coming up in different situations. So we'll choose Cognos. Uh, Int4 has a big solution. I'm choosing these because these tend to be, if you're looking at this, you're probably someone in manufacturing, distribution or, or retail. So I'll choose the ones we see relevant there. Uh, MicroStrategy, Excel, Power BI, Reporting Services, Oracle, Focus, Click Sense, Click View, um, all the different SAP options there as well. And you might see Tableau, for example, as well. It's probably what you would you would see there. Uh, anything else in there? That's probably a pretty good a pretty good list. Okay. Um, so what I can do then is you then see for every one of these products how the different um, vendors perform. Uh, where obviously the higher the number, the, the better, uh, the lower the number, the, the, the not so good. So the first thing here is, is agility, and agility is a, a composite score um, uh, of, uh, of a few different factors like the speed and, uh, and things like that. And what, um, what we can see here is ClickSense, the, the new product from Click over the last few years is, has done really well, Focus in at second, Tableau third, and, and ClickView um, in fourth, the other products. So again, they've all got reasonably high agilities. Big data analytics, it's a big area. Uh, it, the buzz seems to have died with big data, and I think probably, the, to be fair, Bark probably doesn't cover all of the, the true big data type players out there. Some of these people do a lot of, of big data. I tend to find in the, particularly if you are in manufacturing, distribution, and retail, our experience shows a lot of you are aware of big data and a lot of our customers, are, some of our customers, as you can see, are doing uh, big data analytics. But often it's the small data or the real data that you're still trying to get at. Where are my margins low? Where can I sell more? Where can I increase my inventory turn? So it's often the real or the small data we find more relevant, although big data is becoming a, a bigger play in that case. Uh, business benefits, obviously incredibly important. Um, you know, <laughs> the ultimate thing is, am I benefiting from this software? And again, what you see is Microsoft Power BI users, um, yeah, they're pretty happy with the business benefits that they're getting. Equally so with Focus and then the Click products and, and drifting off from, from there. Okay. Um, as we go down, we'll go on to business value again, the, the benefits and also the value that, that, uh, that you're receiving. Now, that's actually a composite score um, that takes in a whole bunch of areas. So this is a really good one. It doesn't look at just at one area. It actually takes in business benefits, project success, price to value perception, and also all of the innovation capabilities like collaboration, big data, mobile BI, and project length. So it looks at a whole range of things. And this is a really interesting one. And again, what it's showing you is like niche vendors like Focus have done incredibly well. Um, some of the new vendors are okay, and then it drops off. And a commonality with all of these is the old traditional mega vendors don't do so well in these user type surveys. Whilst they have a great place in the marketplace, they're not competing so well now. Um, chosen as standard, what that means is within the company, um, how well do, does, um, is the particular solution regarded compared to all the other solutions they have? So what would down here, down here in for, it would say they have a, companies that use in for have a lot of other products that they use that they prefer more, whereas at the top end, every single focus user that completed this survey said that focus was the number one tool that they use in their business. Um, what have we got? Cloud BI. So again, there's been a, a big growth in Cloud BI and a lot more acceptance. And I think it's double digits for the whole survey. 11% of people in the Bark BI survey are now using um, Cloud BI, and that's growing every year and every year. Power BI, they're only using it on the cloud, according to the survey. And you'll see a lot of growth in there as well. Um, focus has a, the benefits of both. You can do cloud or on-prem. The biggest growth we're seeing in the demand is probably almost, I'd say, 90% of the new customers are going on to cloud. So we're seeing a lot more acceptance there. Um, and actually, sometimes people that can't offer a cloud solution um, actually struggling. Collaboration is one of the big new features. Probably three to four to five years ago, it's now become standard. And 
bark in their report how say really they're now seeing common acceptance that people are using these every day. And collaboration means things like sharing charts, adding discussions and mentioning people and, and not just looking and an analysing the data, but actually using that data to make real decisions. And that's where collaboration is massively important. It's, okay, I can see sales are down, but why is that important? What are we going to do about it? And bringing that to a conclusion. And that's something that all the vendors, I think, have done a really good, a really good job with, with doing. Uh, in their own different ways that are relevant to that market. I think that will only improve and get and get better because there's so much collaboration software out there as well um, that you see um, that I think there'll be a merging of that area more and more and, and a lot of maybe some confusion for the next few years of what is the correct collaboration platform that you're using. Is it our intranet? Is it, you know, uh, is it uh, a confluence type product? So we'll, we'll see there. Uh, competitive win rate means how often do, do, does the, the product win against competitors? Again, SAP, what this is interesting, it shows SAP is, SAP does really well. Uh, it tends to be very competitive in those situations. I presume that's because typically it's, it's, it's um, uh, uh, SAP, uh, they're only, uh, SAP customers are only traditionally buying from SAP more often than, than not. Um, it's what you see there. Let's skim through these so we don't bore you competitive as we talked about. Consider for purchase. So again, what you see here is obviously the big vendors are, all, are up there being considered for purchase more often. Smaller, the niche of vendors like Focus aren't on as many deals, which is natural because, you know, we sell to three sectors. This report covers a huge range uh, of sectors in that. The customer experience, obviously incredibly important. How happy is the customer? What are, how are they finding it? And this is a measure between also what they're saying good, but also the complaints. So the, the less complaints, the more happiness, the higher the score there. Okay. We'll fly down customer satisfaction again. Similar, are, are customers happy? Um, hopefully, and again, you're seeing that similar theme there through a lot of these type products. Data discovery visualization, that was the big thing. That's that tipping point along with self-service of moving from IT-led to actually allowing people to do it themselves. and. Um, and there's been a big growth in, in, in that sort of area and all tools are, are bringing out better integration and easier integration tools to allow more users to use things more often. Data volume, again, is important depending on how much volume that you have. Ease of use, obviously, um, is exceptionally important. Everyone pushes ease of use on their website. It's hard to differentiate these days between which vendor really is easy to use, but hopefully what the users say here is, as you see that ease of use, I think what's really important though is when you look at these things, if you look considering buying a solution, ask the question, ease of use for who? Is it easy to use for an IT person, easy to use for data science, or easy to use for Joe, the salesperson that needs to close a deal next week? I think that's a really interesting point to ask. Tableau's fantastic, an amazing product. I suspect and where we've, my, our experiences with it is very often that means easy to use for a data scientist or a statistician or someone a little bit higher on the technical level. Once they then publish a dashboard to a rep, yeah, really easy to use, but there's work that's gone into that. I think if you ask our users, uh, and possibly even a Power BI user, uh, probably not Power BI, user, this is easy to use by Joe, the sales rep, and that's probably where we see some differences in, in that. I promised I'd try and be unbiased and impartial. I'm probably not doing a great job at that, but you know, hopefully you're enjoying it. Flexibility for users, you know, can the end users do what they want to do? Um, everyone pretty same there, but you see that sort of high level that drops off pretty quickly as you get to the big guys below. Um, how, you know, again, it's, it's all great that it's easy to use and uh, you're getting benefits from it, but what sort of support do you get from the vendor? It's obviously a really big question you want to ask if you're looking at buying a BI solution. You want to be supported by the vendor, and again, you'll get that. Uh, again, obviously, it's focused there. We're selling focus. That's what's up there. But I think a reason for that, and you'll see it if you're also considering any other niche products that aren't on this on this survey. Um, you know, you're buying focus from focus typically, whereas often these things you're buying from a vendor. So the support you're going to get can be very variable depending on the partner that you're buying with it. With focus, and, and also with other subscription-based software as well you're going to hopefully have pretty good implemented support because their revenue stream depends on that. Innovation, that's a composite score of all of the different functionality that the different vendors have and, and what you would expect. People with huge budgets are really doing a lot of innovation and bringing new stuff in and, and doing a lot of covering a lot of the areas um, that you would expect. There's some surprising stuff down, down there as well. 
Again, location intelligence is another big area you're trying to combine um, your, uh, your data with uh, geospatial outs or maps, looking at trends, looking at where sales are spread across regions. Some Tableau's done some really sexy stuff on, on that area using open street maps. Um, MicroStrategy has some nice stuff and the other vendors as well. Um, I think what Focus is doing is pretty good at the moment, but I think we can do a lot better. And we both use, like Tableau, OpenStreetMaps as the platform, but I think that's an area you can look to see a lot more coming in, in the future. Mobile VI, massive. Everyone talked about mobile, and then all of a sudden the iPad came out in 2010, 29, and there was a real demand, and everyone jumped and built apps and whatever, but um, every vendor now does offer some form of mobile VI solution. If they don't, I'm, I'm surprised if you, if you consider them. Um, and, and they vary in their in their power from a full-blown uh, app like the, the main product you use just to, a, to an app itself that, that does limited functionality. Um, but... You know, every vendor, I think, doing pretty good um, there. But I'd always ask if mobile BI is important for you, think about what functionality do you need in that product. Like, I think Power BI and ClickSense is a full product. People like Focus, it's the same product. It's HTML5, whether you're on your laptop or your iPad, same product. Uh, operational BI, again, it's looking at a lot of real time sensor, sensor type data. Um, a big growth here, I think, to come that real-time business analytics and feel like MicroStrategy doing really well there. Obviously, performance is important. If it's slow, nothing else matters. You just lose the will to live. No one will accept performance. Everyone has done better with performance over the years. There's less of a competitive difference. Um, these days, it's hard to say you're, you're any faster or slower than anyone else, but the survey sort of tells you who those, who those top vendors are and where to be worried. Again, Performance is great, but how satisfied are you with it is the most important thing, and that's the other big one to look at when you're looking at vendors. Price to value, again, got to be huge, more than anything as well. Are you getting a return on this? Um, Power BI is, uh, is you know, exceptionally cheap, and, and with, you, know, you accept some returns from that. Um, and again, the other vendors, you know, Excel doing great, it's something you, that probably most of you have, and you probably get good value for it. Uh, product satisfaction, we've talked about a lot. To me, again, I don't know why it wouldn't be important to anyone else. Who cares how technically fantastic the solution is? How satisfied are you with it? Um, how long did it take to implement? Again, the higher the here is the shorter the implementation time. And you'd expect someone like Focus or other niche vendors to be quicker because we offer solutions around a, a different a particular uh, vertical. How successful was the project? I guess that's similar to benefits. You know, ideally you want to be at the top there. You want to run successful projects. Um, I, I presume you don't want to run unsuccessful projects. What's the query performance like? That's similar to the performance. Would you recommend it? I mean, again, to me, I think particularly where, you know, you see growth in, in certain markets, that's the number one king, you know, you, that you ask, would you recommend it to one of your friends? Um, that's what I'd be asking um, any vendor I was looking at as well. Self-service, the other big area, and that's really what we've talked about a lot. How much can any user get there and build this? And again, I, I always think if you're looking at self-service BI, ask the question of self-service for who? Do you want Joe the salesperson to be out there connecting to his own data sources and building stuff? Great, if you do, that's what you want to look for, a solution that can do that. Are you looking for an IT person or are you looking for a manager level? So just think about who, what self-service means to you, or is self-service just giving them the data in a nice format that they can then analyze themselves. So is it then loading data or is it then consuming and using the information? And that's where you would say SAP business objects is not end user, um, you know, for, for Joe the salesperson, but it's very good at providing some end user content um, as well. Okay. Again, how well are you supported by the vendor? Uh, probably similar to the implementer support. Uh, as well. So I think there we go. There's a, a quick summary in 20 odd minutes of the current state of the BI industry. I hope that was uh, useful to you. If you have any questions, please contact me at Focus.